Hi everyone, this is Dr. Stefan. Welcome to another video. I'll continue a bit of a Q&A on the channel, this time about COPD. And I got an interesting question that I think gives me um, a good topic to discuss. So if, um, if a person has COPD, this is how the question goes, how do they know if it's emphysema or chronic bronchitis? And are the two different types treated differently? Right, so I think this is a great question. It gives me an opportunity to delve into this topic a little bit. So basically, COPD stands for Chronic Obstructive Pulmonary Disease. COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. It's a condition that is characterized by not being able to get all the air out of the, your lungs between breaths. If you have to boil it down very, very simply. So it's a condition in which there's a bit of a, an obstruction or a blockage in your breathing. And that can be driven by different factors. But the traditional way of defining COPD in textbooks, in guidelines, is that it is a combination between emphysema and chronic bronchitis. So different people have different proportions of each of these conditions. So let's kind of delve into them a little bit and, and try to understand what they are. So emphysema, which is one of the components, is basically a situation in which the lung tissue thins out, for lack of a better term. So you have less of a surface to exchange air. And that's usually because if you think about the lung, it looks like a sponge with many, many tiny little bubbles, which are the alveoli. And that's where the oxygen is exchanged versus this carbon dioxide that comes out. So that's those little bubbles, because there are so many of them, it leads to a huge surface area through which the gas exchange can occur between the blood and the air. So that's what the lung does. Now, in emphysema, those little bubbles become larger because there's a bit of a destruction in the tissue that supports them. So you have less of a surface to exchange the gas. So you can imagine that if this becomes severe, in some people this can lead to a lot of breathlessness, need for oxygen because the oxygen isn't passing as well, you know, and a lot of symptoms generally. Generally fatigue, breathlessness. That's what emphysema tends to cause. That's the main symptom driven by the emphysema. Now, chronic bronchitis is another component, and this is more related to the airways, the little tubes that branch out into ever smaller and smaller tubes as they go into the lungs. Now, bronchitis means inflammation of the bronchi. That's what the name represents. So inflammation of the bronchi of the little tubes of the airways. So it's an airways disease component, and it's chronic because it's something that doesn't really go away. So chronic bronchitis is generally defined by chronic cough, sputum production, at least three months every year for at least two years. That's a standard definition. It's an older definition that I think that not everyone fits that one, but it's a good guidance. So if someone always has a cough, always is bringing up sputum, this has been happening for a couple of years, probably they have chronic bronchitis. Now. COPD is a bit of an umbrella term that encompasses both because generally people who have developed chronic bronchitis may have developed a little bit of emphysema as well. People who have emphysema generally also have a little bit of an airways component. So COPD is an umbrella term that tries to capture all the patients that have more or less similar features, share a lot of similar features, but may have slightly different presentations or clinical phenotypes as we call them. Now, chronic bronchitis, I didn't explain this fully, but I think it's a fascinating topic to get into because it explains some of the other symptoms that uh, people with COPD might have, such as chronic cough and sputum. So basically what happens is that if you imagine the tubes that go into the lungs, the inside of those tubes, as they branch out, they carry the air down deep into the lungs, but the inner side of the tube um, actually has a structure inside this mucosa, this mucosal surface on the inside, that is very, very complex. So it's complex because it also serves to protect the deep lung from um, getting contaminated with particles, bacteria, etc. So the way this works is really fascinating. So basically, the cells that line the inner structure of the tubes they contain what is called uh, what are called cilia. So cilia are basically like hair-like structures that protrude into the tube. So the, the inside of the tube, it's almost like a hairy structure. And on top of that hairy structure, you've got mucus that sort of 
floats on these little hair-like um, structures. And the fascinating things, uh, thing is that these little hair-like structures, the cilia, they continuously move. They continuously move in a synchronous direction towards the top of the airway. So this happens all the time. There's always this little movement that tends to move the mucus that's floating on top to, towards the outside of the airway. So mucus is always being produced at a low rate to keep the airways moist. And that mucus is always moved up. Now, the fact that you've got all this mucus as you're breathing in the air means that there's a high chance that all the particles that you're breathing in get trapped into this mucus. They get deposited in this mucus. You can imagine if you have a bit of flour and you're blowing it all from your hand, it tends to deposit at some point. So there's a long way to go until the air gets to the, the actual membrane that exchange just the air, so the oxygen and the carbon dioxide. So a lot of these particles get deposited in this mucus. Now, the more you inhale more particles, and the particles can come from dust exposures, smoking, big one, right? Um, these sort of things tend to deposit on the mucus. The more particles you have, the more this structure inside the airways tends to adapt. So it tends to uh, produce more cells that secrete the mucus because you need more mucus to trap all these particles. The body is very sensitive. It has these autocorrection mechanisms to protect you. But the more you get these cells that produce the mucus, the fewer you get the ciliary cells. So basically the cells that move the mucus decrease in proportion compared to the ones that produce the mucus. So you have this imbalance that gets worse and worse as you get more exposed to things from the outside air. So there's a very big environmental component to, to chronic bronchitis. So at some point, you will have too much mucus, not enough cells to clear the mucus. So people with COPD develop these symptoms that are very well known to them. So if you know someone with COPD, you will probably know that they struggle with a cough because they're trying to always move that mucus. It can be really sticky. Yeah, so they need maybe medication for, for making the mucus a little bit more loose, physiotherapy, for drainage, secretions, they need to always keep hydrated. They may need to use nebulizers to, to get the mucus out. So it can become really, really unpleasant. And if you couple that with a bit of emphysema in the background, you can imagine that someone will have breathlessness, cough, sputum. So these are this is how COPD has this really wide umbrella and different people might have different reactions to things that they inhale because of predispositions and so on. There is also a component of inflammatory cells that are within the airways and the lungs that also influence the way uh, everyone behaves. So how people react to infection, for example, some people can have a lot of infections with COPD. It's not as clear cut as just someone being breathless, having cough, having uh, increased sputum production. Some people actually have a lot of flare ups or exacerbations. So if you have more than two or three uh, of these flare ups that require a change in treatment, require you taking maybe antibiotics, corticosteroids to reduce the inflammation in the lungs every year. If you have more, more than two or three of these episodes per year, you may be a, a different type of uh, patient who is called a frequent exacerbator and that requires slightly different treatments. So actually in the field of COPD, things are changing quite fast. So before it used to be just, you know, maybe inhalers, maybe very simple inhalers that everyone used. And now I think the field is moving forward because before we used to have uh, treatments that only were able to control the symptoms, the spasm in the airways and so on, the constriction in the airways due to that all that inflammation that was going on. Uh, but these inhalers used to last very short time. So things like Ventolin inhalers or Salbutamol inhalers used to last for a few hours and that's it. But now you've got treatments in COPD that last for 24 hours. So you only need to take the inhaler once a day and it should give you relief throughout the day. So you have, you know, more, you feel like you've got more room to breathe. Now, in terms of whether the emphysema and the chronic bronchitis, uh, whether there is a way of knowing which one you've got. If you have a diagnosis of COPD, I think it's safe to assume that you might have a bit of both. But generally, there would be signs if you would have a lot of emphysema. Generally, people who have a lot of emphysema, uh, where the emphysema is predominant, let's just say, 
they tend to not have as much maybe cough and sputum production, but they can be really, really breathless. So I think that's a good indication that there might be more emphysema than bronchitis. If you have more cough and more phlegm um, that's being produced, I think that's safe to say that you might have more of the chronic bronchitis uh, phenotype or type of disease. So one way of diagnosing COPD, if, you, if that's something that you want to know for sure that you've got or not, is usually to do a chest CT scan. And that will show the actual emphysema. It shows that the, potentially the top part of the lungs is a little bit thinner. There's more air than should be there. You can have little uh, bubbles within the lungs for lack of a better term. So that's one way of knowing that the emphysema is present. But regardless, I think the treatment is um, adjusted based on what's going on. So if you have a mild form of disease, generally only stopping smoking, stopping exposures to any dust, dust fumes and any noxious chemicals for the lungs, I think that's the first step followed by maybe using certain inhalers that have a long duration of action so that your breath breathlessness is reduced for as much as uh, for as long as possible throughout the day so you can do your activities as you were doing them before <coughs> sorry now the other problem is that a lot of people who who have for instance a lot of emphysema despite using the inhalers they're not getting a lot of relief. And that may be because actually the emphysema affects the deeper part of the lungs. Like I show you, the mem like I was explaining before, the membrane is thinner. The, the, membrane, the membrane that allows you to exchange gas has lost some of its surface. So even though the air is getting to the deeper parts of the lungs, there's it doesn't allow the oxygen to be absorbed as quickly as it was before. And also there may be a lot of air being trapped in different parts of the lungs. So that can make people quite breathless. Now, the inhalers that we use, whatever they are, if they have a bronchodilator within them, and most inhalers that are used in COPD generally um, feature more of the bronchodilator or medications that keep the airways open. Basically, they, they prevent the spasm of the airway. These affect the airways, but they don't treat the emphysema because we don't really have a very good treatment for the emphysema. So people who have significant, a significant proportion of emphysema compared to chronic bronchitis, they may actually not get as much benefit from the inhalers as someone who just has more of the chronic bronchitis type. And this is just a slight little nuance. <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm, I'm also getting a cough from, from speaking. Now, the other thing about emphysema is that sometimes there can be procedures that can be done to reduce the volume of air that's being trapped in the lungs. But this is usually not a very easy procedure and it's not reserved for everyone. It's generally, if the emphysema is really, really severe, there can be procedures that can be done either through a camera test to insert some coils within the lungs or other valves that actually reduce the, the air pockets that are actually limiting the working lung from, from expanding. But these are more invasive procedures. Sometimes that can be done as an actual surgical procedure, but it doesn't work in everyone. And it's actually a fairly difficult procedure because the, the lungs that have a lot of emphysema are quite fragile. So things may not go as planned. There can be complications. So obviously discuss with your doctor whether that's something that you can consider if you have really severe COPD. But I would say that it, it's a matter of kind of judging how each individual patient is behaving. You cannot really give a blanket treatment for everyone. So for instance, if there is more emphysema, like I said, we need to try and address the breathlessness and that can be done not so much through the inhalers. People don't react as well to the inhalers. They're not able to, to, to get as much benefit from inhalers, but there can be, um, you know, uh, oxygen that needs to be used sometimes, and that can be helpful for some people. It can be physiotherapy that can help a, a little bit. Um, certain exercises to control the breathing when this becomes um, really difficult and people panic. There can be a lot of things that we can do from the emphysema part, but it may be less the inhalers. I think if someone has chronic bronchitis, then the treatment veers more towards using more inhalers uh, because people might actually have quite a good response to that. And maybe again, physiotherapy exercises to help with draining the sputum, maybe keeping the sputum um, hydrated so that 
so that you're drinking enough with fluid, sometimes using nebulizers, maybe with saline solutions to try and get that sputum moving to, to give you a bit of relief because get, that can be unpleasant. So as you can see, depending on which component is predominant, we can tailor the treatment slightly, but these are conditions that are quite severe in some cases. So I think the main thing is that if someone is diagnosed with COPD, I, my personal feeling is that they should consult a doctor, try to follow all the recommendations, try to stop any exposures to smoking, no more smoking, no more vaping. I'm sorry, but th this would probably help a lot. Um, no exposures to other things, dusts, fumes, as, as much as possible. Think about things through, inside the house, if someone's having a, a stove, a fireplace, whether that's being cleaned regularly. These sort of things, these sort of sensible things, I think can help stop the condition from progressing. So, so that's really what we should be aiming. But I hope this was helpful. I think this video went off um, in many directions, but it's quite hard to distill all this information into one little video. But if you have further questions, I'm, I'd be happy to, to make more videos on the topic. Thanks for your questions and thank you for watching and all, all the best and good health.